Some rather noteworthy Falcons news went down on Monday as the starting running back, kind of, sort of, in Mike Davis has been released by the organization. This move to cut Davis comes after they drafted Tyler Algier, the running back out of BYU on day three, a player that I liked quite a bit, uh, is a similar-ish usage player of as Mike Davis, as the Falcons free up some much-needed cap space. They are saving $2.5 million in salary cap space by cutting Mike Davis, who had a really good year with the Carolina Panthers back in 2020 when Christian McCaffrey was banged up and decimated by injuries. Then Davis kind of got usurped by Cordero Patterson. Davis averaged a paltry 3.6 yards per carry, even at a high-ish volume of 138 carries for five touchdowns. That is a brutal yards per carry. We can certainly blame the offensive line, but make no mistake about it, Mike Davis was a disappointment on the ground. His best work, frankly, came as a pass catcher, and again, we can also probably blame some of the offensive line for that one there. 44 catches for 259 yards, one touchdown as well for Mike Davis. 5.9 yards per carry. The Falcons had kind of placed Davis in precarious territory when they were able to extend Cordero Patterson. He had been a free agent this offseason. They brought over Damian Williams, the former Bayer chief running back. He can handle some RB2 duties. Then Tyler Algier out of BYU. Again, I like quite a bit. I'll double-check my big board here and remind you guys where I had him in this year's class. But the, the Falcons, simply put, did not need uh, Tyler Algier anymore at that stage. It was a – they were just too many bodies. Or the Falcons didn't need him anymore. So Davis has been cut. Algier, by the way, checked in at 122 on my board, the number seven running back in this year's class. I thought the Falcons made a very good pick in selecting him. They got him all the way down in the fifth round, number 151. So great value there. That selection directly leads to the release now of Mike Davis. So give me your one word reaction to the cutting of Mike Davis, the former starting running back for the Atlanta Falcons. I think he'll get picked up by somebody. I don't know who that somebody will end up being in the end, but let me know. One word reaction to cutting Mike Davis. Today's show is powered by Manscaped, and you guys can get 20% off and free shipping on all of their great products, including the Ultra Premium Collection. Manscaped.com slash chat. Remember to use promo code chat to get that 20% off. Ultra Premium Collection includes the deodorant, the body spray, the body wash, the shampoo and conditioner, and the lip balm as well. Manscaped.com slash chat. Works for the Ultra Premium Collection and every single one of their awesome products. The Lawn Mower 4.0, the Performance Package. You get those awesome boxers there as well. And the uh, the uh, the the Weed Whacker and also the, the Nail Trimmers are the best ones I've ever had in my life. They make it a lot easier because they actually work well. I feel like some of the other ones are maybe I just use crappy ones and they just like don't work at all. Manscapes are awesome. So get yours today. Manscaped.com slash chat. Promo code chat is in the comment section and in the description. Let's move to Julio Jones and his future in the NFL. One of the best free agents left. And the, the rumors and the buzz and the whispers have been rather quiet around the player that was pretty much a consensus number one number two, number three overall receiver in the entire NFL. And I think we do understand a big portion of that in the end. That is because Julio is not the player he was in his prime. The Falcons, by the way, in that trade, unquestionably won it. They acquired a second-round pick for Julio Jones, and Julio lasted a singular season with the Tennessee Titans. And the numbers, by the way, very much began to regress. That pick, I believe, is one that became Troy Anderson for Atlanta, the linebacker from Montana State. 31 catches for 434 yards. You can add up the past two years from Julio Jones. 82 catches, barely topped 1,100 yards and four scores. That is less than what most of Julio Jones's career production has been. That was a colossal disappointment for the Tennessee Titans. And now he's a free agent, and the big questions are wondering, 
where does Julio go now? What team does he end up with? So who will sign Julio Jones? I want you guys to shoot your shot, make your predictions. I'm going to make some of my own. I got five teams to kind of keep an eye out for that I think could make sense. But I want to hear from you first. Who will sign Julio Jones? Let me know right now in the comments section. Let's begin with the Baltimore Ravens. They, of course, trade away Marquise Brown. Unfortunately for them, they didn't really address that replacement. They need an outside guy. You've got players like Devin DuVernay, James Prochet, who can handle your slot work there. They signed a couple UDFAs, but their number three right now is Devin DuVernay. I mean, that's probably their number two, actually. So things are thin uh, on that standpoint there. The New England Patriots are next up here. Yes, they did spend a to the much of the confusion of producer Jack, a second-round pick on Tyquan Thornton and have Devontae Parker. They are seemingly always linked to Julio Jones. The Indianapolis Colts next up here. Yes, they signed Alec Pierce to be a outside vertical threat, a second-round pick out of, or drafted, I should say, Alec Pierce, out of Cincinnati. I like Julio Jones quite a bit because of the presence of Matt Ryan. Doesn't that make a lot of sense to pair Julio up and Matt Ryan and see if those two can capture the magic that they once had a constantly linked to Julio Jones team, the San Francisco 49ers, especially in light of the Debo Samuel rumors, which I don't think he's getting dealt, but they aren't really going away from that standpoint there. Jawan Jennings, Brandon Ayuk, and now Danny Gray also on the roster. But Shanahan Julio, we know for a fact that duo has worked really, really well in the past. And finally, my wild, dark horse, crazy idea. What about the Atlanta Falcons? And bear with me as I explain this here, because the Falcons, yes, they drafted Drake London in round one. That was awesome. They did not add anybody else in free agency at the receiver spot, in the draft at the receiver spot. Right now, their starters are Drake London at, at one outside spot, Olamide Zacchaeus in the slot, and... Auden Tate, Daryl Hodge, Demir Bird, Frank Darby. It's, a, it's still a bad receiving core in Atlanta, even for a team that's going to use a lot of two tight end sets with Kyle Pitts and Anthony Ferksker. So if I were the Falcons, as long as the Julio Falcons relationship hasn't been nuked to the earth, which, you know, maybe it has been, but in terms of Julio getting volume targets... Atlanta's one of the teams that needs a receiver the most, more than anybody. So I actually, I don't hate that idea all that much. We will have in a little bit here on Chat Sports the top NFL free agents left. That video will be out Tuesday. So if you haven't already, subscribe. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV.